Hello, welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry version 12. This is Curse of Strahd. We're continuing with a bit of building. Uh, before we do, um, last video, we finished doing the Coffin Maker's House, uh, and I left with a bit of a quandary about uh, our one of our vampires, Valent or one of the um, brides of Strahd, uh, this, uh, this character here. Oh, if I can get her from under the coffin, pick the right blinking thing. Let's uh, just make her visible for a moment. Uh, and we created this particular character and we put in all of her special abilities and stuff. But she has two forms, first form and second form. Um, and there was a bit of a question about, how, well, how do we transform her from one form to the other when all of her abilities change as well? And there, there's a number of things we can do. Token flip, change your images and all sorts of things like that. Um, and what I decided was just easier is to have a first form and a second form. And I'll just hide one and reveal the other. <laughs> it's just the easiest way to do it. <laughs> um, so we could do really, really complicated and stuff, but I'm going to be describing stuff. So um, and they're going to be watching that. So all I'm going to do is first of all hide this one, uh, and then reveal this one instead. So well, you know, reveal it. Um, so I don't need to get really complex with it. It's going to work absolutely fine why bother with all of the the stress and everything on is it going to work when i really just don't need it to do it so anyway um then going back as i often do when i've done these uh, these videos because it's hard to do two things at once all right i'm old um is i went back and checked the module and it's a little bit confusing because it talks about oh once she hits zero hit points in first form she transforms into second form and the fight continues and then you read the module and it's like, oh, right, okay, but she flees when she hits zero hit points. It's like, hang on a minute, which is it? So looking at it a bit more deeply, the idea is, is that she remains in first form. When she hits zero hit points, she attempts to escape using her smokestick. So in theory, in this fight, they don't see her second form because this is really their first encounter with a vampire, one of the vampires anyway. They've got the uh, the vampire spawns to deal with. This is where it starts to heat up a little. So that's a little surprise actually for later. I'm going to leave this on there and available because if things go wrong, if they manage to stop her escaping, then I do want her, I do want them to see her second form and then she will make her escape because she's got enough abilities to actually be able to escape. Um... So she's got abscond, uh, aggress, leap, dislocate. She's got a whole bunch of stuff which makes it nigh on impossible to keep her. <laughs> if she wants to go, she's going to go. Um, even if she's restrained and things like that. So um, yeah, I'm going to leave her available in case we need it. So I thought I would just touch base on that. But that kind of um, brings me to my next point is I've rearranged my folders on here. So I was putting everything into... The, um, into the one shadowed town Valaki uh, area. But actually, there's quite a lot of stuff to go in there. Um, so what I've done instead, bring this over. This is the um, the Cur uh, Curse of Strahd Reloaded website that we are using to follow most of the adventure. And they've broken down the shadowed town into um, Andr St. Andrew's feet at the Feast, blimey uh the missing vastania uh lady uh, watched as wish etc so i've decided to keep my things a little more tidy um i've broken mine into the same folder so you can see i've got the the first parts there so st andrew's feast we have completed now with the coffin maker and that's pretty much all around finding the bones we're now on to the missing vastani um or vastania and I've labelled these E1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so it matches with the module. I don't need it to match with the module because I know what's happening with each one uh, and nobody else is going to be looking at this. But actually, if we package this, that's going to make more sense. If somebody else picks up this adventure to run it, they're going to actually you know, be able to relate it to each other. The other thing that I've been doing in the background, just to make you aware is because, and I'm not going to leave this up for too long because um, of copyright information and it is only the first page I'm showing you, because we're using a mixture of the um, the Curse Reloaded, 
which contains all the new stuff, but it does not contain original material, we have to refer back to the original adventure. That means I'm potentially jumping between two different adventures while trying to actually run the game. So what I thought I would do for the areas where there is a mixture of them, I have pretty much just copied and pasted from both of those and worked out, right, what are my descriptors that I want on hand? How is this flowing for me? Um, just checking it, chucking it into a Word document. So we've got our initial session tonight. So they're going to be doing the Gates of Barovia and the Svalich Woods and, and everything else. Um, they're going to be running through, essentially, the whole of Into the Mists. They're going to be doing all of that uh, and arriving at the Death House, possibly entering the Death House. We just have to see how it goes time-wise. So I wanted to make sure I've prepared that bit and you can see I've got the introduction to the death house there um, but once I've this particular description I quite liked I need to just check that it doesn't give me well, I have rather I have checked to make sure it doesn't give any material to the players I didn't want them to have or it doesn't conflict with other things like my scenes and I say it's a grand manor that's four stories tall and then I show them an image of a bungalow you know or a caravan on a beach it's like hang on a minute that doesn't work <laughs> so I need to check stuff like that to make sure it makes sense with itself uh, so I have done that um, and then once I hit this well actually I don't need that anymore because I will switch over um, a hundred percent to the original module for running the death house so that I, that's just something I'm doing to organize myself as a DM I've got all my scenes and everything done but all my descriptions that I want to be able to say I want them there so um yeah bit of reorganization lovely jubbly get all of that sorted um so continuing with building then um Blinsky's toys there isn't a Aeon bar whose maps we're using there isn't a battle map for uh, Blinsky's toys, but it's actually just a role-playing um, uh, encounter. So they can go to the shop and they can talk to him and find out some information and then they kind of leave. So we don't need to go inside. So rather than just continuing using battle map after battle map after battle map, I thought I would just go for an image of this one back to a little bit more of that theatre of the mind where we're going to be having those conversations it's a role play opportunity so I don't need to do anything other than slap up my image here just AI generated image uh, for that next thing to actually build though is the Vistani camp so uh, we're going to slap this one in uh, so go to configure uh, we need to are we happy with that just checking my navigations and things I don't want to accidentally have navigations on where I don't need them uh, I'm going to come into here and I want the Vistani camp can we make those larger please for the audience thank you very much uh, so this is the camp now it has camp day and camp night um, in the pack I've got rid of the ones I don't want you know, just to make my life a bit easier and to save space I'm always going to go with the day ones because if we want it if it's night time we just use foundries lighting to make it darker <laughs> let's, not, let's not make our life more difficult than it has to be so this is the Vistani camp it's a lovely little map um, we can we have also you may have seen it just was in the folder there we've also got a roof area that we can put over here if we wanted to use levels I'm not going to bother um, it doesn't matter that they can see in the camp already I'm going to draw some walls around here uh, anyway so that's going to cut that out they won't be able to see this inside the tent um, just we don't need to put a roof on every single thing we can if we want to so uh, what we do need to do though is make sure that we've got a sensible size grid for this now we can take a random I, as you know I like to make one red because it's easier for you guys to see make those lines a bit thicker uh, and generally with Aeon bars maps 200 is about right so in this instance I would say 200 is about right yeah so the entrance is, you know, approximately five feet. I might move it across so that entrance is a little bit more in line with uh, what we would expect um, because it's a circular thing. So we're always going to have walls not aligned. So let's do that then. Um, we call up this. Uh, we don't need to scale it, but what we can do is use the uh, use the arrow keys just to realign that grid. Uh, and if I put it about there then you can see that um, somebody can stand in the doorway. So uh, that would make sense. 
uh, we can actually have a token directly in there. Perhaps pull it back a little bit. So down here we can be standing against the wall, etc. But it's not going to be perfect because it's a funny shape for us. Um, I could go with hexes. That would fit better. But I don't want to confuse myself, <laughs> let alone my players. So lighting, I am going to have token vision on, fog exploration. Levels don't stable lights. Uh, I can have that on because I'm not going to use levels. Um, do I want global illumination for this? Um, yeah. Uh, yes, I am. I'm going to have global illumination on for this. And in fact, actually, what I should have done is darken it slightly. Um, so if I put that darkness level... You can see that that is adjusting it. Put it down slightly. Um, so it makes the whole thing slightly darker. So when I start adding things like these bonfires in here, they are going to show up uh, a bit nicer for us. So for a bonfire, let's go with 10 foot radius and, and then 20 for dim. That should be fine. I know I haven't put walls in yet. We'll do that in a moment. It's not a source of darkness. What color do we want it? Well, we should have it some kind of um, orangey kind of color. I always find orange is quite a difficult kind of colour to get on this. Um, but there we go. Let's shove that in. If I move it to one side, you can see that's a that's a reasonably good colour for it, I think. Animation. Well, torch is kind of the best one we want for this with a nice sort of flicker for a fire. That seems to work really well. So I can hover over that. I can't click on it because it will want me to draw another one or just open this one. Hover over so it's highlighted, Control c uh, move to where I want the other ones in Control v And by holding down Shift, I can just adjust that to be slightly more accurate to on that fire. So, uh, yeah, there we go. We've got our fires giving off warmth and light within, well, and with outside of the tent. Let's slap some walls down. Um, now these are going to be normal walls because it's a tent. Of course they could cut through it. Um, but we're just going to slap these in roughly like this. We want to make sure that if they're outside they can see that it's a tent wall. And if they're inside they can see if it's a tent they can see that it's a tent wall so that should work perfectly it's also containing that light for us now of course what we can do if we want to is we can add an ambient sound onto here and if I can remember where I put it can I remember where I put it we should have a sounds folder with a crackling campfire so let's use that now radius of effect let's make that uh, let's make that 15 um, yeah let's make that 15 that should be plenty we're not going to put the volume up too high we don't want to deafen people <laughs> uh, and we don't need to do anything else here um, am I missing the somebody mentioned about the problem with um, with some of these sizes but yeah that's annoying can we try that again where where's me Where's my save button? It's off the bottom. Where's... where's... <laughs> oh, I've not encountered that before. I can't actually save it. What is going on with that? As, uh, so somebody mentioned um, in the comments to one of the previous videos only a couple of days ago uh, about the resizing of windows and about how it's kind of stuck now. Um, so uh, they were specifically talking about, you know, if you open the chat messages, you can't resize this window anymore. Um, and you used to be able to. You're stuck with the size it is. This sidebar here, yes, you can hide it um, and you pull it out, but you can't control how wide it is. Um, and they were having a few problems. And I kind of said like, I would look in to see if I could find some solutions to it. Um, but it's not a problem I have. Yeah, well, here I am. <laughs> That's quite ridiculous, isn't it? Quite ridiculous. Um, is it? Is yeah. It's just. It's, it's only the. I don't have an option to change sheets either. There's none of this that I can shrink down. Just trying the enter key to see. I, I mean, escape will take me out of it, but I don't want to come out of it. I want to save it. 
So, uh, how, how am I going to do that? Ah, create an Such an idiot. Such an idiot. How, how much screen, uh, who's written in the comments already? Who has already written in the comments? I'm used to there being a button, the, the, the update button being across the bottom. But I guess what it's done is it because of Tagger, it's crammed everything in and now the update ambient sound is there. So I've just made a complete ninny of myself. Um, you're welcome. <laughs> <sighs> but it still goes that those windows not being resizable is potentially problematic for people. Yeah, so let's pretend that was an exercise that allowed me to have that particular discussion. All right, so um, that should be crackling away nicely. Let's just drag a character in there. Oh, when you can do it. And I can hear that quite softly in the background, bearing in mind that I have got my, uh, my volume turned down reasonably here. And I'm aware that historically, I do have a bit of a reputation for having things way too loud in videos. So uh, rather err on the side of caution. Just be aware I can hear that if you can't. Okay, so happy with that. That's kind of all ready to go, isn't it? Not an awful lot we need to do on this map. Uh, we've got to put the NPCs in. Um, and I haven't prepared all the NPCs yet. Um, I've got a whole bunch of Bavarian villages and Strahd's forces, Sir Paul um, and the Vallaki ones. Let's close those ones up. Um, I haven't been through. Some of them haven't got um, images yet, etc. So... I'm going to come back and do the NPCs later. But that's, you know, it's kind of like just dragging them out and going, there's your NPC. It's not difficult. If I <laughs> Deleting them apparently is, though. All right, so let's move on and look at the next scene then, which is going to be the Burgomaster's Mansion. Um, uh, let's start off, of course, by configuring this and bringing in, make sure we haven't got navigation on, bringing in our background image. I want to make sure I'm not sticking it into sounds there i want to go back into our scenes and into Velaki or Velaki, depending how you want to say it uh, and we should have a burgomaster's mansion now again let's make these larger for you we have the mansion ground floor with no lighting a first floor and an attic as well as the roof um, so we've got to have three layers with a roof on top so we want to start with this one here let's bring that in um, while we're here, let's make sure we put that grid on so we can check our grid is going to be okay. Suspect it is. I'm going to make the assumption that that should be 200 because of the maps we're using. I'm going to again put global illumination on and bosh. There we go. All right, so we've got this in. Um, and yes, conveniently, our grid lines up perfectly with those windows and with the doors. That's going to make my walling much easier than I usually manage to make it. <laughs> but I knew, do need to bring levels in here. So Ripper's levels, uh, we want to add. So ground floor, the first floor, and the one above that. So let's call this ground, as I always do, zero to 10. If I can actually use a keyboard, would be useful. Uh, this is going to be first floor, and that's going to be 10 to 20 and uh, just give me one second and then it was then it was attic so we call this one attic which is going to be 20 to 30 and obviously you've seen me do this more than once um, that should be all fine let's stop editing that that's all good so this is the ground floor here ready to go um, and because we've got those in we can now smack in our walls Nice and easy, normal walls in for there, 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 there. Now again, and people do comment about the fact that um, I make mistakes with my walls, apart from where I blatantly make a mistake. Uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, I do tend to slap it all together, then go back to the module and go, right, what did I miss? And then I go back and go, oh yeah, that's a secret door. Oh yeah, that's a this, that's a that. So uh, that's just part of my process. That's just the way I do it, especially when I'm recording videos. Um, I can read the module beforehand and then as soon as I start recording, I've forgotten it all. Um, so, I 
So either you guys get to sit there while I read from a module which I've got a feeling is not going to be uh, an experience you want uh, or I can get it wrong and then correct it afterwards and pretend that's part of my process <laughs> rather than I'm actually a bit of an idiot. Yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> All right, so this is nice and easy. Everything is lining to the grids. It's like, oh, it's like it was designed for me. Now let's smack in those doors. Uh, not the window. Uh, door there, door there, door there, door there, door there. And again, because I'm not looking at the map, there might be a secret door that I've just not realized is a secret door. I've completely missed it. Not worried about it. I will check it afterwards. Slapping in all those doors. Um, and now let's slap in all the windows and then we're going to do the final check. So window, 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 window. And one of the things I need to do for all of these buildings is check the description for are these windows actually windows or are they boarded up because we have quite a few of them like that. All right, let's start the right hand side. Make sure I've not missed anything. Got a door, 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 door. These are all, well, that's a window. That's a, uh, that's a door. Um, now, here I've made a mistake because this is a stairs. So what I don't want to do is to have that as blocked off wall. I want to have that as an invisible wall so that they are going to they're going to be able to see it and then go around it. So that's a, a bit nicer way to do it. We all look to be fine in here. Windows, windows, windows. There is no moving from one to the other there. This is windows, windows, a door here. Um, so again, visible wall here so that it stops them jumping across here. I mean, they can. There's no problem, um, but it just kind of denotes that actually this is the stairs. This is at a different height. It just helps show that. Okay, I've forgotten to close Discord again. Apologies. Might be beeping at us. Um, right, have we got anything else that we've missed? Go away, please, Discord. I don't need you open right now. Um, you can stop hassling me. Um, I think we're. I think we're okay. I think we're okay. Now all of these should be wall height 10, bottom 0, which is good. All right, we will have lights to do, of course. We're going to come back and do all the lights together. So let's go to the first floor then. First floor, we will need to go to our tile browser, which is taking longer and longer to open because of uh, the amount of maps that I've got in this one particular folder um, because I've got all of these big maps in here the church and everything else is particularly big so um, yeah that's not not great but that sounds like a me problem yeah <laughs> and I just pulled that in and I wasn't looking which one it was I think it was this one come on on that hello Hang on a minute. What have I done here? No, that's the one I've already got. That's why I'm putting the, the same room on the same room. Um, is this one. Burgermaster's Mansion, first floor. Yeah, if I just hovered and was patient, it would have told me that I was using the correct one, wouldn't it? Um, but there we go. Uh, right, okay, so that's lined up. So the first thing I'm going to do is to lock that in place so that I can't mess it up. You've seen me mess it up so many times because I'm a bit of a muppet. Uh, and again, we can just go in and slap the walls in around here. Nice and easy. So let's start over there and just slap all these in. No doors to worry about on this floor. Go all the way to that window. That's a window above the main door. Smack all of those in. Lovely. We do need to put in these interior walls, of course. From there. Lovely. I'm going to put this one all the way down here. All the way across. Um, just checking that's not a balcony note that is in fact a walled off library there we go oh it's so nice when it happens to align perfectly with the grid and you haven't got any of those offset uh, things there right so windows big windows at the front there 
and just ones along here. Now you can see that there's this the first floor, there are curtains there. But let's run with the assumption that the curtains are open. If it's daytime, we can always block them off if we felt we needed to later on. All right, so uh, we need to do the interior doors. Mustn't forget those. There's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. Trying to Just trying to work around in a logical uh, manner so that I don't forget anything. I'm going to miss something. I know I'm going to miss something. Let's face it, I will. Okay, that's good. Now we've got this banister here, which is again, it's around these stairs. These plants are what's underneath. So I'm going to use those invisible walls again. Not secret doors, invisible walls. Come on. Uh, just so that our players don't uh, try to plummet off of there. Or they don't realise that that is a, is a drop. Okay. Did I get it right this time? Think, I think I did. I'm going to be confident. Well, if I didn't, you will guys will let me know. All right, cool. Let's do the attic. So back to my uh, rather slow tile browser opening. That wasn't too bad, was it? Um, oh, we haven't got there yet, though, have we? Patience. There we go. And we want to bring in the attic here. Uh, well, which one was that? That looks like this one. Burgermaster's Mansion, attic, no lighting. Right, slap that down. Um, did I line that perfectly? Yes. So once again, I'm going to lock that in place so I don't mess it up. And now we can go back to doing our walls for this bit. Not invisible walls. Don't want invisible walls. Normal walls, please. Uh, taking care of the window that's there. Uh, and because of the way that this roof is, we obviously need to um, put these walls all the way across. Nope, don't select that. Nice and easy. Hardly any rooms or anything up here. I note the trapdoor on the map. Put in these couple of windows. One in there. One in there. One in there. Doors. One door there one door there now what we we do have a roof tile so let's select our roof placement over here we can go back to our tile browser should have done all in one go right come on you can do it uh, and there is our roof it's this one here and we can slap that roof in down there I know it's misaligned but we can easily pop that across there we go so we've now got our attic we can take our roof view off we can see down all right cool so uh, we need to do lights now should we just steal lights from somewhere else that we liked the look of yeah let's do that let's go to the coffee makers house select lights uh, that's the light we want happy with that hover over control C you can see it says copied one ambient light object, easy peasy. Pop over to the Burgermaster's Mansion, put levels on, ground floor. Let's find all of these lamps. So hover over, put it on lights, thank you. Uh, and there we go, we can just slap that down. Again, I'm going to turn them all on while I do this, because sometimes you kind of go, hang on a minute, there's a huge, great big dark area in the house, and that doesn't make any sense. So I'm slapping them down wherever we've got these little lamps hanging on the wall. Uh, it's another fun game of which ones of these do I miss. And I'm going to go back and realign them in a minute. It's just sometimes easier to smack them all down, fix it later. And of course you don't have to fix it either. I mean, I do fix it because if the light appears to be emanating from, you know, two foot to the left of the lamp, it looks a bit weird. So I do like to make sure I get it right. Um, Okay, uh, just turn that one on. Good. Lights outside the front? Yes, there are. Of course there are. There we go. And now we can just line these up by holding down shift and making it a bit clearer. We don't want those lights bleeding over through walls would be a little bit weird. So let's not do that. Uh, and if you're wondering where to line it up, like the middle of the bulb, just below that middle point, uh, I tend to line that up with the... Uh, with it, the top of the image for the lamp seems to work just about correctly. If 
for what we want or for I want anyway. So that's all going in there, that's all going in there. That one needs to move in a bit of course. That one needs to move in the other way. And again you can see that I'm being imprecise. Is Good enough is good enough or otherwise we would be here for oh I don't know decades. Decades. There's a lot of building to do in Cursor Strad. Missed that one over there. And while we want to get it right we also need to bear in mind that the amount of time that it takes to set this up um, once it's done, it's done. It's done forever. The only shame is, is when you kind of go, I've put in all this effort what, for one campaign, um, you know, all this effort, and they come to the Burgomaster's Mansion and then they leave again and you go, oh. <laughs> all the effort I put in set up. Which is why sometimes it's like, you know, uh, rough and dirty is absolutely good enough or otherwise you can spend so long setting up scenes that the players just walk off from. Um, and I wouldn't want to feel despondent and go, why am I spending so much time um, doing this when they they just don't really notice well I enjoy the building process because I'm that kind of you know nerdiness um, <laughs> but I do like to get it right I like them to enjoy it even if they don't acknowledge the fact do I want that light on outside that's actually on the floor below I'm gonna say no uh, that one there that one there I forgot what I was saying I was rambling about something wasn't I while I was doing this um, about the amount of effort that we put into certain things um, is it actually worth it yeah I mean it is it is but just don't you know don't turn it into your day job because uh, you'll get we will feel like a job and that's rubbish we don't want to feel like a job we want to feel want to feel like a, a game we as the DM should be enjoying ourselves as much as the players as wherever possible I mean obviously if we have to prioritize we prioritize the fun of the players over the DM that's kind of part of our job but it's not a job it's a game let's all enjoy ourselves we should be able to get a situation where everybody's enjoying themselves um, and if they're not find yourself a different group um, and if it's your group well fix it <laughs> yeah it's uh it's it's not nice but every now and then you get a player that just it, it wrecks the dynamics of the group they might be really really funny but you know you know or, or or something like that or have a really strong character that they're playing you know really really well except it's derailing the rest of the adventure um that, that that's not helpful if it's stopping other people enjoying themselves including the dm um you're probably better off without them and what's really hard is when that person's one of your mates or something and you're like you know you're my best mate but get out of my game that's that's tough but you, sometimes you have to do it for the good of the party thankfully very rarely for me have i had to do that i have had players um, who've elected not to continue because they didn't feel it was right for them um, and as the DM that can be a bit hard to take and you think like oh they don't like my game well no and that's that's actually okay we have to be all right with that <laughs> because uh, it's their game too and if it's the wrong feel for them fine okay move on you know we shouldn't be try get try not to be too precious about it Okay, oh, blimey, lights everywhere. All right, so if we just uh, see, you can see what I mean. These lights kind of line up pretty well with that, and the Burgermaster's Mansion is quite well lit. So I think we have got all the doors and windows and walls correct. I think we've got all the lights co correct. I don't think I missed any. I bloody have, though, haven't I? <laughs> I missed one there. <laughs> I'm going to have missed another one. Again, I do tend to go back after I finish recording and just check, you know, see if I can spot the mistakes before you guys point them out. I rarely spot them before you guys point them out, to be fair, but uh, there we go. Uh, it's a little little game uh, that I play with some of you guys about can I correct the mistakes before you find them? Uh, like I say, the answer is rarely yes. It's nearly always no, I can't. What I am going to do is these candlesticks we've got in here all over the place. I'm, again, because they might get lit. Whoops, can we move that in the correct place? Thank you very much. I'm going to change these, though, and make these a bit uh, a bit dimmer, a bit smaller. Maybe 15 and 10. 
Uh, I'm going to change them to be a, uh, a see what I mean bright yellow is really kind of difficult to get uh, a more of a yellow light and because they're candles I'm going to just put up the animation speed just so it looks slightly different so I'm just going to copy that slap that down anywhere like this I can see a candlestick you know just makes sense right and again the chances of them being lit in the game is very very small but if some git decides that they want to that was misaligned let's fix that some git decides they want to go around to light all the candles in the house just to annoy me I'm ready for them all right <laughs> I'm ready um, is there one in here yeah that's a candlestick we'll stick that in there uh, don't think there's any others on this floor let's check the ground floor for candlesticks none in there it doesn't look like there's any candlesticks on the table and again if it doesn't look like there's candlesticks we don't need to bother because if we can't if we don't think they look like candlesticks the players won't either which is great oh blimey there's, there's so much light around here it's kind of blindingly bright around this place except for that cupboard it's a cloakroom by the looks of it um more candlesticks over here and another one over here and another one over here I mean this kind of makes a bit more sense it's a living area you know doing some reading or whatever um, and again just because they have them doesn't mean they've got them lit these are nighttime candles on next to the beds you need to get up in the middle of the night for a quick wee or something else um, they're ready to go all right uh, and finally the attic was there any candles here there was I already kind of put that one in for the candle up here that's fine uh, anything else around here at all um, just that one which I already did there is another candlestick just here on this desk so let's slap that out and turn it off okay good we're done so let's turn all these lights off we don't necessarily need them on we're going to come and turn them on as we need them but it's just a right click but we don't uh, we don't want to have everything on they turn up in the middle of the day and the whole house is on fire with the amount of lights it's got on that but that would just be a bit weird wouldn't it a bit silly uh, and there's a good chance that they are going to come here during the daytime um, and that's the other thing just to consider when are they most likely to arrive at a location if it's most likely to be night turn the lights on and turn the global illumination down so that it is dark ready for their arrival if they happen to turn up at an unexpected time that's okay you can just toggle those um, but most likely going to come here in the daytime so we're going to keep our to remind you in the configure in our lighting here we're going to keep our darkness level down um, if I was expecting to come at night I would be sticking that up much higher so it's going to be dark and I'd be putting some of the lights on so it's thematically and atmospherically appropriate what a bunch of nonsense I just made up all right so uh, are we happy with this now it does say I've got a couple of other icons here I've got an attic carpet um, I suspect it goes over there so let me quickly check that module for um, for in here um, where are we we are in the Burgermaster's mansion um, persuading the Baron so it's a big role-playing event here infiltrating the mansion etc searching the library um, I need to check the other adventure as well um, really annoyingly D&D &D Beyond is down right now Oh, I've said that and it's literally just popped back into life. It was down for maintenance. Uh, I was going to do a different video, um, but I couldn't because I needed access to that. <laughs> so it's like, let's do Curse of Strahd instead. Oh dear, it's a tough life, I tell you. It's a tough life. Um, <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> okay, back into, right, so areas of uh, Velaiki there. And I want to go to the Burgermaster's Mansion. That's what I'm doing. Come on, get it together, boy. Um, and it is indeed it's up here where this pentagram is um, it looks like there's a rug covering it so uh, just very quickly uh, what I'm looking at here is the um, is the official map and I'm looking at this bit here get rid of that again 
mustn't show you too much of the official module. Um, right, so searching the library, blah, 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 blah. Scrolling through the other map there, there's da, 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 speaking with Victor, um, and then it goes off. So yeah, that's not an awful lot of help to scan, read that. But let's put this rug in anyway. I can always delete it if it's wrong, you know, when I check it after the video. This is what I mean. I don't want to spend ages reading the, um, the, the, the module um, while I'm recording videos, because that's kind of weird. Um, so let's select that, and it's this attic carpet. So we, you know, pretty obvious it's going to go in the attic, right? And I believe it goes right there. Now, unfortunately, that covers the chest. So, uh, oh, we're going to, we don't want it to snap. We can do that. And then we can, Place that kind of perfectly over there. Not perfect at all, is it? Let's move it slightly across. Come on. I want it to cover it. In, I don't want it covering the chest as well, because that looks weird. Um, but it's covering enough of that floor that the party probably won't realise there's anything under there um, unless they actually investigate and I move the rug for them. So that's good. Now, the other item that we get in the maps is um, this... Stop making it so small. Stop making it so small. Anyway, this one. Come on. <laughs> Is uh, Yeah, so there's a chandelier to go in the dining area. So we can do that as well, can't we? Um, this is the dining area. It's why there's no candlesticks on there. That makes sense. So we can slap that in if we want to as an overhead tile. Do you know what? I'm not going to bother. Um, Shall I? I will. I will. For your, for for you, for you, I will do it. Um, <laughs> something wrong with me, isn't there? <laughs> I'm gonna slap it in uh, for you guys so that you can see how that works. Um, my players are probably not going to notice or really care. Um, so it's one of those details that is totally unnecessary. But we can slap that in. That's going to be directly over the top of the table, about there. Yep, and then. Um, we can, of course, make that a roof, or we can double click it and we can make this an overhead tile. And if we say that this, even if we just say this is elevation eight, it looks exactly the same, but any character moving under it, or rather, let's take, a, take you out. Uh, as you can see, any token, move zoom out a little bit. It's gone, where's it gone? There it is. Uh, any token why has it disappeared how interesting it wasn't supposed to disappear this is supposed to be overhead fade entire tile um, let's have it as none always visible maybe that's what's doing it for this one it don't like that does it do you know what I have had a couple of little issues with levels and tiles recently um, I had a couple of troubles with the belfry as well because that is at the same level as, there we go. So I've, I just basically tried to put it too high. So if I climb across the table, you can see that the token is under the chandelier rather than on top of it. So that's what it is. And it only needs to be a difference in one foot between the two. Um, it makes sense to go, oh, it's eight foot up off the ceiling. But as you saw, it kept disappearing, which is a bit weird. And I had that in the belfry as well. Um, let me just point out what I mean in case you're going, what the hell are you on about in the Belfry? So over here, da, 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 da. thank you very much. In the Belfry, we've got these these bells here. Uh, and in theory, I only need, if I put them too high, um, they kept disappearing, exactly the same as the chandelier did. So instead of having them, um, you know, the, the ground is at 40 foot, putting these at 42 feet, uh, because there's no wall, it means when a character walks under them, it works perfectly. I, I think I showed that in that video. So it's the same little challenge there. In theory, I should be able to put that. Uh, I should be able to put that chandelier at like eight foot and it would make sense. But it's just not quite doing. It's not a problem because look, we fixed it. It works. Um, but yeah, in theory, it shouldn't do that. Uh, let's get rid of you. Now we got chandelier. I ought to put more lights in, shouldn't I? <laughs> Let's nick a candle, because these are candles. Um, 
this is a candle over here. And what we could do is we could put a bunch of them in, couldn't we? Um, can I be bothered? I don't think so. I think I'm just going to make this one and I'm going to make this uh, a bigger radius based on the fact that it's a much more powerful set of candles um, because there's quite a lot of them. So let's do that and then if we toggle that that's quite a bright chandelier. Maybe we can... well that's not the colour intensity. Um, we can perhaps make bright 10 and leave it as dim 30. That might be a slightly, that's that's slightly, it's not quite so much in your face, is it? So there's another set of candles that might be a light if they're in the dining room uh, having dinner, then that will be lit for us. Oh, okay, right, so what have we done? We've done, uh, we've done, um, we haven't put any sounds in, that's fine. We've done all of the lights upstairs, downstairs, etc. We've done all of our walls, except for the ones that I've missed that you've already typed in the comments. Um, we don't need in. Yes, we do. We need. Yes, we do. We need some stairs, don't we? So, um, stairs. Where are these going? So these stairs go up to here. Okay. So what we're going to do is we are going to make sure that's on because it's just easier. Hello. Thank you very much. Uh, draw those stairs in. So when we hit that square, it will drop us off here, and we can continue upwards, which is fine. Um, that's no problem at all. Uh, other stairs on the ground floor. Da, da, da. I know we've got the big staircase here. Slap that in. So if we walk up these steps, we appear here. And then we can carry on round the landing. No problem. So that's easy. That's done. I don't think there was any other stairs down here or ladders. Nope. So that should be fine. Just check that that is hidden. And This one here is hidden because I don't want the players reading you know level stair 0 to 10 I don't want them reading that um here now this is not this is ladder is to the top is for the bookshelves it's not actually going upstairs as far as I'm aware uh, we did see that there was a trap door up to the attic um are there any other steps and things here right so where is that trap door to the at to the attic it's over here so if it's here on this level it's kind of here on this level so it's above the bedroom so I'm going to have a quick look at that in the original module um, da, 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 and it does indeed suggest that it is right there so I'm going to draw this in uh, and I'm going to lock it okay I think that's correct let's check let's take uh, Father Lucian uh, and we walk over that and we do not go upstairs right we don't because we don't want to we've locked it but I should be able to come to this drawing and just go right if I which one is which because it's got two locks on it let's find out that now works oh where's he gone hello where is he hmm oh stupid boy I need to move up to the attic there he is and then we go down again and then I move to it's one of the things that I'm finding that with levels is slightly annoying as the player yeah it's going to follow them as the player but as the DM I can see where they went but it hasn't changed the level for me as the DM so then I can't see them which makes sense but it confuses me maybe it's because I'm not the brightest <laughs> maybe, maybe that says a lot more about me than anything else so uh, we're going to leave that locked so it doesn't work um, unless the uh, the party uh, find it. Um, and that is that's area area O. Uh, and when we just scroll through the um, official adventure, and I've got the open in the other window, of course, it does indeed say the master bedroom. Blah 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 blah. Uh, the Baron and Baroness sleep here, uh, sleep in one bed at night. Nothing of value here. The trapdoor in the ceiling can be pulled down to reveal the attic room. An unfolding ladder allows easy access. So it doesn't look like it's particularly well hidden. If they walk in there, they can see it. You know, if they spend any time in there looking around, they're going to spot it. So that's fine. Don't mind that at all. Doesn't have to be. Everything doesn't have to be a secret, does it? Um, what have I not done? I've not put a region let's go to the ground floor I've not put a region in to block our weather now I haven't got any weather in but I might want to I might want to chuck rain in I might want to chuck fog in or whatever so I'd rather have the region ready to go 
let's just do that there it is rather have the region ready to go with its behaviors in place um, I don't want to execute script I don't know why it gives me a default execute script I don't want one thank you go away uh, d -d -d what I do want is a just darkness level which I like to just dim the inside of buildings a little bit um, and we want to darken it thank you very much and I want to uh, suppress weather so I like to have that ready to go so if I want to slap weather on I just to slap the weather on just just do it um, and then it's already um, it's already set up for that. I haven't got to fiddle with it on the fly. It's a bit like putting in like the, all of the lights. Yeah, I'm not going to have them on. Some of them might never get lit. In fact, lots of them will never get lit. But I'm ready for it if my players come back at night and decide to break in or something. Because I've got to do research in the library. They might negotiate with the Baron for access to the library and get told it's a big fat no, you're not getting in. They might decide to sneak back at night and do a bit of midnight research. Okay, brilliant. Then I'm going to have to have the lights ready. I'm going to have to darken the scene and things like that. So it's just about being prepared for them to do the unexpected because that's their job <laughs> their job is to keep us on our toes and our job is to roll with those punches do the best we can to keep a keep a decent game flowing for them all right so i'm going to call this video to the end here i think it's getting quite long now um so we have got blinsky's toys ready to go uh the, the fastani camp ready to go and the burgomaster's mansion ready to go i need to sort out the npcs that are going to go into these areas make sure i've got images for them all ones that i haven't create those images ones that i have start slapping them in and chuck every i've got the baroness and stuff i think i've got the baroness done anyway um, you guys saw you probably yeah um i've got the baron let's zoom in and have a little look at a couple of these there's there's my baron um there's my baroness that i've slapped in there so i've got these kind of done i just need to check with the module of where i should put them where it makes the most sense for them to be when the players first arrive and anybody else because they're going to be some servants and things like that Woo! okay <laughs> <laughs> right thank you for watching really appreciate it uh, take care everybody leave a like would be appreciated if you're not subscribed please do so it really does help out the channel uh, and it shows me that you want us to continue creating this kind of stuff and i know the building videos are not the most popular and you much prefer the add-ons but hey you're getting both because i know there are people who really enjoy watching me make a absolute tit of myself doing this stuff <laughs> take care everybody i will see you in the next one.